Hello, you're listening to Me and Paranormal You with your host, Ryan Singer. Because it's more fun to believe. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening to or watching a new experience of Me and Paranormal You with Ryan Singer. This is Ryan Singer. I don't know why he said with Ryan Singer. Is that what, Do you say this is Paranormal Karen with Karen? No, I, I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> just in I case there was any sense. Okay, well, just in case this is the first time anyone's listening to the program, my name is Ryan Singer. I am joined by Karen Rontowski once again. Karen. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well in your new digs. Um, we are, uh, Karen is the host of Paranormal Karen, which you have to check out. And you follow her on uh, Instagram. And it's, what's the Instagram is it, I always forget. Is there an underscore before Rontowski or is it just at Rontowski? No, the uh, underscore Rontowski was a, a duplicate of me that I had a hard time getting down. I'm just at Rontowski. And uh, yeah. And if for anyone interested, I have a tarot Patreon that's Rontowski. Just everything is just Rontowski. Okay. Like I'm in high school and that's my nickname. Yeah. Hey, Rontowski. Uh, uh, speaking of Rontowski, getting Rontowski, you uh, you got Rontowski like minute one of going to Post Town last Sunday. You know, I it was so uh, yeah, right on the way in, and it was a woman's voice, and I walked in, and Matt was Matt and I had been talking outside. And we walked in and he goes, he said, well, look at this. I, don't, I forget what he was telling me about his machine. And he turned it on. And I don't even have that great a hearing with those machines and immediately heard Karen. And I was like, did you, he goes, so you heard Karen? And I was like, yeah. And then he goes, say her last name. And it, there it was, Ron Towski. And most uh, living people can't pronounce my last name. So that was excellent. Yeah, that is, it's really cool. I wasn't there for that and neither were the cameras or the audio recorders, but you know, such is the nature of these things. Um, we had a really fun time. And then you and I had a pretty interesting conversation later that night when I, right before I left, cause you were on the road, um, to, uh, to where you are now. And I I'm, I'm curious about, uh, you know, Matthew and I just talked uh, about the experience there. And I don't think I sent you, I just got the footage and I, you know, from him and I've got footage of, you know, some sessions we were doing where everything lit up when we were trying to establish contact with, you know, entities or intelligences out in the stars, aliens. And that's when the devices went bonkers. Uh, I wanted to chat with you about the, uh, you know, the return to post town and you know how all that felt for you going back and you know if you had any expectations or uh you know what was the overall sense because we can talk too about like how you were like i'm not coming back to this place right <laughs> well i do i think i told on your podcast what happened last time right yeah so people so can go it, back and listen to that by the way so people can go back and listen to that uh that episode and then we'll be up to speed and basically what it kind of proved is these spirits are about as tricky and clever they're uh, i would just use the word clever because how they got you know it was just a big it was almost like a play of how smart when it was over i just, just said post town you won you win that round you got it and I said, boy, I'll never go back there. And then it was, I remember, I, th I think you said I mentioned it to you, but I was like, at one point you must have said, do you want to go back? And I said, yes. And I was thinking, why did you say yes? Um, but what's even worse is this time when I walked in and they said my name, I almost felt flattered. I almost... <laughs> Because this is what this place does. You can see literally Post Town has a relationship with Eric and Tim and those guys, and they're not outsiders. And you now seem to have that relationship with it too. And I was like, that's very interesting that they, it was almost like, 
that's going to, I don't know why it should have made me nervous. It made me relax right away. Oh, the old friends are back. Yeah. It kinda, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. And, you know, I've been actually at the school, you know, not including the three investigations, one of which was a two-nighter. Um, then I was there the next day, pretty much all day and night for a comedy show that we filmed. And then there was two other times on top of that, that I've been there. And then there was another time I had to go back because I left a computer cord. So I, I you know, so that's, you know, two, three, four, four days investigating five with a show, six, seven scouting eight. So I've been there about, you know, just under like 10 times now. So I do feel a lot more familiar with, uh, like, I kind of remember where things are now, uh, as far as like the layout of the place and do feel a little more comfortable there. Although I will tell you this, uh, Matthew Jackson had to leave, uh, cause he had a three hour drive back last Sunday to get home. And after driving three hours to get there earlier in the day, he left around 10 o'clock. Let's just say ballpark 10 o'clock. I'm sitting in the break room area trying to decide if I'm in a solo investigation. And my, when I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll do some solo. And I was like, not going to do solos because I left one of the walkie talkies up in the doll room uh, when Matthew and I were shutting her all down. And I was like, oh my God, I left a walkie talkie upstairs. Fuck was my first thought. And then I was like, he's like, you want me to go with you? I was like, no, I can do this. And so <laughs> I walked up into the doll room, grabbed the walkie talkie. I did not run. I stopped myself from like briskly walking. I, you know, I walked rather quickly, but um, I'm still not like, Hey, let's just go solo style. Like Eric, you know, uh, I'm not doing any of that over there. I think that's unnecessary because actually when I had to go to the bathroom, I was like, I know there had been, or someone had told me about a lot of activity by the ladies room. And uh, I went and I just, I had to talk myself into the whole way, just go in the bathroom, nothing to be afraid of, nothing's <laughs> popping up. Just go in the bathroom. There's no other women here to ask to go with you. Just go in the bathroom. But, it, you know, I do think that place has so many layers of things going on that mostly, mostly I feel like every, like if anything was going to follow me home, it would have been last time. And the fact that it didn't, it just sort of sent out that warning um, makes me feel like that place is safe. But I do feel like there's some under layers that you don't want to wake up or you don't want to be there when they wake up. I remember that, um, I don't know if it was Daryl told me there was some uh, famous medium or something from England that came in with his son. I thought, I know he said it was from England. I don't know if it was a famous medium or something. And they immediately went downstairs to the boiler room and he said they came back 10 minutes later and went home. And that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. I've heard this story. I believe they were there to even film something. And they're like, we're getting, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it's multiple full body apparitions, uh, you know, of darkness. Uh, we're like standing there down the hall or something or something like that, looking at them. And they thought it was like the camera person or something messing with them. And once they realized it was not, they're like, okay, enough is enough. We're just, we're just going to leave. And apparently the group that was in there the night before us uh, claimed to have seen a full body apparition while they were there. We, we didn't get anything like that. Uh, even after you left and hit the road, Matthew and I didn't get any full body apparitions of any kind, at least that I'm aware of. But there is something about drilling down into the place and even having conversations with Daryl uh, after you and I got off the phone and then Daryl came in. I hadn't seen Daryl pretty much all day. Um, we had, you know, a long conversation about things and it wasn't your typical, like, you know, he's, he's going through some things and there's, you know, you kind of see a different side of like, okay, this is the, this is the heavier part about being here. 
and you know it makes you it makes me thankful that you know i'm not living there um although some people can you know handle that better than others well yeah and first of all i i hope nothing i'm saying about him comes across negative because i mean it all positive he's fantastic he's fantastic yeah 100 nice, he um his body postures bother me not like something's wrong with him like he's a bad person but his body postures i'm very in tune in fact i've always there's been three people i've known that have an s type spine not a spine of bifida it's literally like almost a crunch spine and every single one of them had been compromised at one time or had some sort of really like beyond attachment and i had asked around and everybody was like well that's where it attaches you can see the spine something happening so when he was sitting in his office the way his posture was was exactly like that you know they have all those props kind of behind them there's this prop skeleton that looked they were i was almost like this almost looks like a, a weird joke but i worry you know he's like he said he was falling down he's getting so many injuries there that uh, how could you live there i you know when i walk in i it's so heavy i don't know how you could i couldn't if we were doing a shoot for a week i couldn't stay there like the other team stayed there i would need to go home at night and wash it off me yeah i i feel that and because i mean i think sleep at that point is just an idea you know, I, I don't know if I'm actually, you know, getting any sleep. And I do know that I think the intention of doing an investigation, I think it, it helps create and pile onto that, that sensation of being there. Because the, the few times I've been there, just to pop in to check out the place to look at it to pick something up. The, uh, the feeling is different. When the intention hasn't been set in advance that we're trying to make contact with something. And, and, you know, strangely enough, one of those times is, you know, one of those very first times I ever went in there was there was these loud bangs on the ceiling that kind of just kicked off the whole, oh my God, this place is going to be bonkers. But, but it also wasn't, um, I don't know, the thickness of the place mm -hmm. was different when I knew I wasn't going to be snooping around if that makes sense it makes perfect sense in fact that's why i think the tv show guys really got that we're not dancing for you you want to be scared you want to do your fake scary show we're going to scare you yeah and you know i think <laughs> you know i think entities understand intention you know, as much as I can say that without sounding like a kook to many people. And no, they can read our minds, I think. I feel like they can read our minds. Yeah, and I think, I mean, because I'm, I'm like starting to like extrapolate some ideas here that are maybe a little bit outside the bounds of what, you know, I ever thought that I would consider. Uh, one of the big ones is I think, I think portals are not just doorways. I think that they're sentient. Um, and, you know, Matthew and I were joking around about, you know, if Bigfoot is actually the ferryman on the river sticks, right? And it's not necessarily going to keep from, from the land of the living to the land of, to become dead as much as these portals can be that ferryman and they help you communicate from the land of the living to the land of the, what we would consider to be dead or otherwise paranormal and that you know so there's like a connection between the physical and the non-physical realities and for some reason i just got it in my head that these these portals aren't just little you know scientific anomalies that open up as much as they are you know conscious and aware of themselves mm -hmm. you know i just did a um a podcast with a woman named seraphina blackman who is a kind of a fey expert she had some fascinating things and she was saying how um the fey don't bother you unless you bother them 
which can be, uh, and one of the things she listed was ghosts. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, spirits show up in their realm and they're like humans take care of your garbage that's not supposed to be here. And I thought that was a very, very interesting uh, analogy, which be if we're at post town and there's spirits and all this other stuff and we're all kind of communicating, that is going to bring in some, like if that's on the fey realm or if it's through these portals, that is going to be making some entities mad. Get out of my yard. Get out of my yard. We're in their yard. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and, you know, the connection to, you know, yard and nature and everything, obviously, with the Fae and all the lore that, you know, and the history that goes along with the Fae. um, You know, it's, that's interesting because I hadn't even thought about that in regards to Post Town. And... I don't necessarily, well, zero part of me wants to, you know, have an experience like you did with, you know, the, the attachment. And that's not something I'm ever interested in experiencing. And so that makes me kind of like, I've never been that drawn to, well, let's try to, you know, let's try to engage with some Faye right now. You know, let's try to, let's try to get involved here. And, um, you know, some people might be really into that and, and try to do that as opposed, and then they're like, I would never try to communicate with an alien. Like that's, you know, you don't mess with that. Just like some people, like you and I have different opinions of, uh, you, you know, using a Ouija board and some other things. It's like, it's whatever works for the person and their viewpoints. And there's sometimes I think you can be, you know, you can be stirring a hornet's nest and maybe not even realize it. Yeah, well, especially Ouija board, I think it's intention. And I think, uh, you know, I do believe that Ouija boards can be safe. But I always say, why take the chance? Because I just think they're, they're that low vibration. But you know, it's interesting, because uh, it is something about them. Christopher Balzano had a, he did a long, long, long time ago. He laughs at this book. He said, you didn't read that book. And it was like the best, one of the very first ghost hunting books out. And he was in Boston and they had this home and in the home, it was so active. They would literally just um, have everything on all the time. And they just hear voices all over. And they had, they had left everything running in one room. They were listening downstairs and there's all this chatter. And then one voice comes in and says, shh, they're taping you. And the whole place goes silent. Like they, I think they know, or I don't know why there would be a rule that we're technically not supposed to be taping them, but it's very, I find that very interesting that they know that because when we, when I walked in and that lady said my name, she said Karen twice before she said Rontowski. And as soon as we turned on the tape recorders, nothing, nothing was coming through. And it was really clear. It was unbelievably clear. Um, it's very interesting because I was just watching the matrix. And um, one of the things the lady says is, that ghosts and aliens are a program gone wrong, that that's not supposed to be here, Uh, which I found a very interesting thing to hear right now that they're, you know, but I do think whenever we're using those boxes and you ask human, are you human? You almost always get no in post town. I haven't, have you had any yes in post town to that question? No, and I don't even think I'm, I'm never even drawn to even ask that question. To me, it's, I, I feel, I, I don't, I hesitate to say that that question is a waste of time. Cause I, I do also do think that it's, you know, individual investigators come in with their own ideas of things they want to try to accomplish and who they want to communicate with. And I know specifically this last time I wasn't even like I was, when we were talking on the phone later, I was like, you know, talking to dead people wasn't even on my mind Mm -hmm. going into post town this past time. And it doesn't, it didn't occur to me at all 
to even think that we may have been communicating or from what I could sense any kind of human spirit passed over or gone on into the after form. I wasn't, it didn't even occur to me at any point that that's what I might be with or surrounded by. My feeling, because, uh, you know, I have a little bit of mediumship, I'm working on it all the way, but it seems to be pretty in tune, is I feel there's, if there are any human spirits there, you know, it's like the rule of thumb that human spirits can move like one to two pounds. That's the most, unless there is some sort of rage or something that is just giving them all this energy, oh, just exactly like in that movie Ghost, where the guy learn to move the can uh but then he gets so mad he can kick the can um i feel like there everything ha is way more powerful i think a regular just spirit would get scared out of there or move somewhere else fast do what they can i don't think that's a place for anything like that i think you're right on the ufo i think because of um I think sometimes because of the weirdness of that place, everything is drawn there. I mean, the, the full body apparitions, this is very weird, but when you were saying that, I kept thinking men in black or something else was even coming through that didn't, isn't even part of the equation that we have right now. Yeah, that's interesting. And I know Tim Irie talks about this and, you know, Alex Mistretta also, you know, believes this about that place, that it is, you know, a central hub of activity and you know and tim talks about a potential portal out on the property um which you know has close ties to some of the investigation we we were doing in early october or at the end of october last year early in the investigation and it i'm curious and you know and even daryl talks about i don't know it, it's interesting because i don't want to say too much about daryl right i mean i don't want to start putting his personal business out there, but the, I know Ernie and Brian of POV paranormal were saying before the initial investigation took place, they were saying that they felt like things were ramping up there. And, uh, for some reason, and then Eric talked about Eric Connor of Epic paranormal also talked about how they had, after I had come to visit and told them I wanted to do CE5 stuff that, you know, some, some weird, like aliens came through some devices as far as like saying aliens or whatever. And so, I mean, it's like just that power of setting in an intention at any place. And, you know, the energy understands who all is involved in that and knowing that Eric was going to be involved in that investigation, you know, so he's a part of it all. Right. And then, you know, the, we didn't cause, obviously, our investigation didn't cause the energy to start amping up at Post Town because it was amping up before we got there. And there's all kinds of people going through there investigating. So, you know, there's nothing like, quote unquote, special about us going in there. It is interesting, however, when you look at the ramp up of energy at Post Town, when you coincide that with what many psychics and other energy healers, et cetera, understand and have been telling us about the, the rising of understanding in the collective, shall we say. And you and I, you know, we, we've seen this firsthand from the time we started doing our podcasts and et cetera, or just being interested in this stuff more, you know, five, six years ago, if I was in the green room of a comedy club, you know, somebody would be like, you're into crystals, mm -hmm. right? But now everywhere you go, there are people with crystals on them, right? And it's, I, you know, I'm not at the forefront of this. There's people been in crystals since, you know, ancient times, since before written history. But there's been uh, an elevation of consciousness or at least of awareness about these things. To me, it seems like it's a ripple effect that potentially activity and energies are increasing in strength and maybe even frequency at some of these places, specifically at a place that could be a central hub. Do you think that our behavior as a collective 
human race trying to communicate with ghosts and energies and entities, do you think that has the effect of stirring up more action, the more and more people who are trying to communicate, now more and more ghost entities, spirits, et cetera, whatever, are being stirred up into like, oh, uh, I guess, I guess we gotta, you know, not be on call, but oh, uh, I guess we gotta, you know, they're they're all trying to wake up everybody. They're starting to wake up. We need to get ready because now more and more of them are, are starting to understand what's going on. Do you think there's a correlation there? Yeah, and I think there's two two schools of thought with that. One is about the veil. And I also um I think mankind is, uh, there is an evolution of us right now. And uh, there's a, a, another, I always like to credit people, so I hope I'm not saying a lot of names, but um, I have a friend, Danielle, um, I can't remember her last name now. She's famous, kind of, Danielle Egnu, And uh, she communicates with angels. She has since she was a kid. And she said, what happens sometimes, especially with like teenage girls, is when they hit that, that puberty and they hit that become kind of psychic, what happens is it's almost like they pop up in the metaphysical world. Like they weren't there before, all of a sudden their energy and they pop up and then everything kind of turns around and goes, hmm, what's that? Maybe I'll check that out. Um, and it's where activity starts. I think that's sort of what's going on with the collective. I think everybody's getting a little more um, telepathic, a little more sensitive. I think sensitivity upgrades are happening all the time. And I think right now that's almost like a, on the metaphysical realms, we're just popping up. We're just like all of a sudden there is, uh, a lot of them are here. Because you know, if you talk about consciousness and how um, they always say, if you have an idea, it's that's five other people on the planet have it. You got to act on it right away. Like there is no original idea. An idea will come in and people will have it because it's in the collective. I think with all these paranormal shows, um, with all the clips, with everything, we've put it in the collective. It's just there for everyone. Even the people that avoid it or say, I don't like horror movies, we've put it in their collective now. We've made it real. And the other thing is, I think everyone will, uh, or most people in the psychic field will agree, there's no veil anymore. And, and the veil wasn't exactly like a sheet of something that lifted. The veil was what we thought we could see and what we couldn't. We were sort of our own veil. Like you wow. can't see ghosts and that was sick. But now it's like, they're on TV. Is this clip real? Did you see this on TikTok? This creeps me out. So there is no veil. So we also may be seeing what had been going on anyways, and we just didn't, weren't in tune to it. That's really, that's really fascinating. You're blowing my mind with that. <laughs> the veil was our perception of what reality is. And as soon as that changes, we understand what reality is. That veil is removed. And I have a friend who is extremely you know pk abilities beyond what they even understand how to control and she talks about this constantly and in such a simple way meaning easily communicable that once people realize what reality really is you realize that all of this stuff is natural and it is such a mistake to consider all this stuff paranormal mm -hmm. and you know because paranormal is almost a it's a term that's been taught obviously and you know, purposefully or not purposely, you know, I hate to get into like, this was done on purpose to keep people away from their power. When in fact, it could be a, maybe a little bit of that. But also, our own ingenuity as human beings, and our own desires to fulfill our desires, in such a very immediate, fast, easy way, have just dis we've distracted ourselves. I mean, it goes back to that whole big brother thing, like, the government doesn't need to be filming you. You're filming yourself. No. 
And so why would the government ever need to film you? Because everyone's filming themselves constantly nowadays. We are the big brother that we were worried about. Um, so to me, it could be where we got so distracted by our own inventions and our own ingenuity when it came to being able to like, oh, we can concentrate sugar. You know, <laughs> you know, I can just bam, bam, bam. I can just boom, boom. I can get, yeah, uh, you know, video games. Bow, 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 bow. So it's like, who needs to ascend, uh, you know, you know, psychically or, you know, I mean, I, I, I guess that makes sense. Who needs to have psychic communication with anyone when you can now call them on their cell phone? You know, that's a very interesting topic in itself. And it, it's funny because I feel like you and I run in two circles. We run in circles of comedians and we run in circles of paranormal people. We don't run in either circle of followers. And I think there's a lot of people that really don't want to know, want to go to work, come home, watch a show, go to sleep. The curiosity is a very, um, curiosity is one of those things. What do they say? It's a, it's a, a curse and a, um, and a blessing, a blessing and a curse. And I think, and I don't know if this is, you know, when, when they say they're holding us back, I don't think we were that easy. I think we were pretty easy to hold back. <laughs> hey, I'm going to make you a deal. And if you agree to this, I'll take it. It's like, <laughs> Wait, I didn't even tell you what the deal was. I don't care. Okay. Is there sugar involved? Give it to me. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. We weren't very hard. We didn't need any convincing. No. Tell me uh, to go to church. Tell me who to marry. I'm good. Yeah. And, you know, and I get it. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I don't get it. Because I believe in, over the course of my life, I've believed in many things that have brought me comfort and one could even argue that I've replaced religion with the paranormal and the supernatural. It's like, okay, yeah, you don't believe in religion anymore, but you've put all your beliefs in this stuff now. So, uh, so there's that. Well, believe me, as someone that just uprooted her whole life to go to a place she didn't want to go to take care of her parents, I could use some comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, down the street, there was a Unitarian church, and I was like, Maybe I'll go there for a minute. <laughs> isn't that the place where they have, uh, isn't that the place where psychics operate? Uh, that's the spiritualist church. If that's oh, a spiritualist, spiritualist. church, that's I would go there in a second. Unitarian is just love everybody. Everybody's welcome. We don't, you know, gay people, trans, whatever. Everybody come and just let's be happy. We accept all forms of uh, monetary. Uh, everyone is welcome and so is their money. Yeah. <laughs> Go could put it that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I don't want to I don't want to bash on Unitarian churches. I I I you know I I have no reason to. But the um, I'd love to have tax. When can we get tax exempt status as the paranormal? If we made it a church, maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now I think we're we're going down a road that maybe we need to. <laughs> <laughs> that went, might alert the IRS. <laughs> church of the paranormal. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, so many people have tried doing that uh, with their cults, uh, you know, these alien cults or UFO cults and other things. And uh, a friend of mine I went to high school with, um, she uh, probably one of the smartest people I've ever met in my entire life. Uh, she is doing her PhD. I don't, I, I probably shouldn't tell people what she's doing her personal business on, but you know, she, I can say this because you know, she's supposed to, I'm supposed to talk to her soon for the show. You know, she was actually, her and her husband were actually in a cult and uh. they managed to break free from that cult. And one of the most fascinating things I realized and I learned later about people who join cults are people who join cults, typically they're above, they're a way above average intelligence. So, I mean, I know a lot of us on the outside sit and think like, how could you fall for this? How could you be so stupid or whatever people say? And in fact, it are, it is, it is people who are smarter than the average person. Typically studies have shown that end up being members of cults. And I think part of that could be because they've been, they've needed information. They're so intelligent. They can see through things so often something 
happens that they witness, that they see. And there's parallels to the paranormal here, becoming a believer in the paranormal. I wasn't a huge, I mean, I loved the paranormal and, you know, believed in stuff. But until I had my own personal experience, I mean, talk about getting cinder blocks strapped to your feet. Now you're firmly planted, right? So you know, I, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know like how the collective, like getting back to what you're saying, processes all of this. I mean, I mean, what were you going to say there? Well, two things. I also believe that there's, um, you know, I'm not good at belonging to groups. That's kind of why we're comedians too. Yet we belong to that group. And those are the people I'm most comfortable with. You know what I mean? Like I still, I feel like being an outsider, when someone is really smart, they are usually an outsider in the school system, in other, you know what I mean? Like that can, you, you, it can really isolate you being very, very smart, just like it can be very beautiful. I know. Uh, <laughs> but I also think there is this thinking of, uh, and this can be intelligent people. Some of the most intelligent people I know right now keep saying, why don't we all buy land and start growing our food and we'll all just live in a little commune. And I always feel like that's where it starts, right? Like then you got to share a bathroom, you know, but you know what? But very like, practical, very, very practical. practical. I, have, I like my own place. No, everybody have their own place. But that is literally rebuilding another society, which is what a cult can do. We're rebuilding another society and this one's going to be better. So I can see people not falling for it, not as smart or dumb, but as hopeful. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like I've never had those fantasies of you know being surrounded by a group of like-minded people who you know we all have the same goal we all have the same like dream and there's a simplification i think that is very attractive like simplifying yeah. one's life and getting back to simpler times as they say which i don't know i don't know you know like because some people would argue that we're meant to keep pushing forward and outward and beyond. I don't know if that's true. No, and I, I also think uh, the biggest, the hardest thing I think, and maybe I'm wrong on this, maybe that's why I've been single forever, but my mom always said to me, you always learn to take care of yourself because when it comes down to it, no one has your back. And that actually, you know what? It's not even that no one has your back. You can have the most supportive mate, spouse, friend, whatever. But like, if you have cancer, you have cancer. You know what I mean? If you get lost in the woods, you got you. There is this sort of element of mankind where we all are a little bit on our own. So that thought of taking it into a place where the whole community has my back, that makes, you know, God, I don't know what that looks like. Um, it makes me feel like uh, the way our two political parties are, that they've just broken into, you know, we're both right. So we're breaking off like this. And then it makes me go, ah, but the other thing about the, the paranormal, I do think I've often joked with a friend about this, that Facebook was literally a test to see how we would do with telepathy and we failed. Like it's everybody, your thought all the time, say what you want you know, you can show your face or don't, but just be honest. And it just, what didn't work. We aren't ready for it. But I do think all this interconnectedness has made um, some everyday things. I, I don't know how to say it. So it makes some everyday things more paranormal or people more open to it. I will say this, when you get that piece of evidence, whatever it is, the, you never believed and then you saw an apparition in your house, you were a skeptic and you went on a ghost hunt or 
uh, whatever it is, that one thing, you went to one medium, that one door does not lead to another door. It leads to a thousand doors. If that's true, then maybe this is true. If that's true, then maybe what that person said is true. It's not A, B, C, D. It's like, wow. And if you are that kind of person that wants to know everything, you're going to run through that door. And if you're the person that doesn't, you're just going to close it and go, nope, nope, never happened, never happened. Yeah, I think you perfectly explained the, the, the beginnings of my podcast just now. <laughs> I didn't hear it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, I mean, that's the exact feeling I have after my first experience, what you just described. It is, oh my God, if this is true, what else is true? And now, boom, there's a thousand different rabbit holes to go down, different doorways to walk through. And which, which I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, I'm hoping for, and I'm hoping against that, you know, the investigation that we're doing that we started in October, it doesn't lead to a thousand because I mean, because that's un, unfinishable, not that this thing ever can be finished anyway, but like the one thing that really struck me when we were talking and I can't even remember specifically what we were talking about. But it was during that conversation that it struck me that like, oh, post town's not important for this investigation to continue. And what I mean by that is it's not the only necessary place where this investigation can take place anymore. And but it was it was very necessary. And it wouldn't have happened without it, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. And I think so. So I think, you know, because I in talking with Matthew Jackson, which people listening to this can go back and listen to that conversation, I probably posted it just before this, is he's got something he does called the cabin sessions with his ITC device, one of his ITC devices. And a, a voice that comes through this device during his cabin sessions came through for us at post town. And uh, specifically referencing, you know, saying that claiming to be God, who, what's your name, Ra, where are you from, Cosmos, right? So that same voice and other, uh, you know, at where he does his cabin sessions has come through and said things in that same general ballpark in that same vicinity. Also, an entity named Seven comes through, which... And that has come through a bunch for Matthew that has come through for Eric at other investigations as well in the past. So what if, it's, it's like, we're just now catching up to the fact that all of this stuff has been connected for us from a long time ago, potentially. What if though Ra is actually uh, Matthew's higher self and it is God and we're all just like ignoring it. <laughs> Well, undoubtedly, he has a connection to his devices, uh, specifically yes. that one. And I think I think much the same way that you develop a relationship with Post Town, the more you go there. I do think that investigators, you know, develop relationships with their devices. Yep. So it yep. is and, you know, and it ties into the the idea that, you know, all psychokinetic phenomena, uh, you know, originates from a person's subconscious. Um, so they're just seeing a physical manifestation of something that they don't understand they're creating in their own brain. You know, that's a very popular theory in the world of the paranormal. And I'm always about frequency. It's always about frequency. You get the right piece of equipment and that's on your frequency. You can get 10 of those same things and it may not be the same, but what you see, you know, that's with so many things when you're on the right frequency, you know, this is crazy. Well, we're in this thing, but I took a, I took a parapsychology course with uh, Lloyd Arbach, and it was amazing. Sorry, sorry, I'm just laughing. It's like for people who are watching, because I mean, I'm posting all of these videos on YouTube now for everybody. But uh, the moment where you're like, "This is crazy," and then it was an immediate like, "Ah, well, we're in uh, like that." That quick turnaround that happens, like, well, no, nothing crazier than anything else we've ever said. 
you know, so many times in my readings, I go, this is going to sound weird. And then I go, you're talking to a, a psychic. Of course, it's going to sound weird. What yeah, am I doing? Yeah. Um, but uh, you were taking a parapsychology class. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm so aware of this. He talked about how in the beginning, when they had those big IBM computers, they did tests on people and there were just people. There was a guy could not get the big computer they every time you walked up to it it broke and they literally his secretary had to put a piece of tape that he was only allowed this close to the computer and they found they did studies people that say i hate computers have computers breaking all the time like there is a tech psychic ability and people that love computers just know how to fix them now i am i love computers I have a problem with printers and printers don't like, like I break printers. Sometimes I'm not even in the room and I can yell at them and I will break them. But <laughs> this printers whole, are know, so I, scared of you. I just see all these printers like sitting around like their own version of a campfire talking about like, I'm going to tell you a story about it. <laughs> about a woman named Karen. And everyone's like, no, no more of them like that. <laughs> You are the printer's like monster. I am the printer, Jason. Um, they, uh, well, it's funny because I always thought if I ever had a TV show, I, that my greatest thing would be that I'd have a, an assistant that would hear the crash and then just go, do you need a new printer? And I'd go, yep, because I'd just throw it on the floor and, and take it out. I can't get them to work. I can't, or I can't get them to stay working. And about a month before I started my cross country drive, I just kept saying to my car, I love you. I love you. I love you. And it made it all the way with so minimal problems that every time when I get it, I pat it and go, remember, I love you. Yeah. I've, I've been, I've been a big proponent of like naming the car, talking to the car for years, knowing that I'm, I'm at its mercy, traveling yeah. high speeds, oftentimes in the middle of the night. And I try to be grateful and thankful to the vehicle all the time. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's one of the, you know, to get a little more woo woo psychic as the sun goes down on me in Utica, New York. Um, that's why they say these are two really wild tips. Try these, Ryan. First of all, you're supposed to say, I love you to your food because it puts you on this food's frequency. And then when you eat it, you get more nourishment out of it. But I swear before I moved, this is water or liquids are the most programmable element. So you whisper into your water what you want to happen. And I kept saying, how about we make this the smoothest move ever? And I get there without any car trouble. And then you drink it and it becomes part of you. How about I get a place right away? I had a place in three days. It's like, I should have just gone with, how about I feel good when I get there? I missed that one. <laughs> well, it's the monkey paw. You can't think of everything, right? Right. But anything that puts you on your same frequency, that's like, I have to start telling this apartment that I love it as much as I loved my last. I have to do that to make it kind of comfortable. Yeah. You know, I, I, I do have the sense that something's going to happen very soon for you where you're going to be like, oh, wow, you really, you're going to be talking to your apartment. And you're going to be like, you're going to be standing in the middle of the apartment. You're going to be like, wow, I didn't see that coming. You really surprised me. Thank you. Like, this is going to, you know, that moment in a movie when like, you know, the, the two, you know, actors who hate each other or don't get along, they have that moment where they really come together and it's really gratifying for the audience. I, I see you like just you and like the apartment, like shaking hands, like this is going to work out, isn't it? Uh, I think I see a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. There's um there's three other it's there's three other guys from Texas here that are on a uh I don't know if it's an oil rig or a something kind of a business trip. So they're here temporary. And uh I think a couple of them away from their wives. And I don't want to brag, but I think I could have three boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> So this apartment's really turning into a um, a real situation yeah. here for you. It sounds like, <laughs> you know, some of that probably is not going to be, you know, we'll probably have to edit out some of that for the actual 
uh, for the podcast part. But uh, you know, are you gonna you're gonna, you're gonna start okay doing it? I was just joking. I, no, are I, you going to start? I was going to ask, are you going to start a new podcast? Uh, you know, uh, polyamorous Karen. <laughs> that could be, but I think they're, they're, they're so nice, but I feel like it's very good. They're just stuck here and they, you know what I mean? And it's like a woman moved in and it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, Oh, a crazy woman. <laughs> there's a different, there's a different energy going on around here all of a sudden. Yeah. What is that? Um, you know, by the end of this, you, by the end of their run there, you're going to be giving them readings. I can't wait to hear updates on this. You're going to be reading them and like, they're going to be so into the paranormal by the time, you know, three months from now. I hope so. They may be. The guy didn't get my first joke at all. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, no, that's always <laughs> such a bad sign. That's always <laughs> such a like, oh, okay. I got to recalibrate. I got to recalibrate. <laughs> yeah, he's like, He's like, really? You're a comedian? <laughs> yeah. You don't seem funny. Why am I not on the floor <laughs> laughing to... from just saying hello to you? It doesn't seem like you're a comedian to me. Like I that's know. that's like people who meet a magician. They like they expect the magician to like disappear immediately in front of them <laughs> upon meeting. But you don't seem like a magician. You haven't scared me into believing the devil is real within 10 seconds of meeting you. So how uh, that's like the first time I saw David Blaine, my brother and I were watching it on TV and we're just like, what the fuck? Like, what is devil real now again for us? <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm curious if uh, what your plans are uh, now that you're up there. I mean, I know you and I have talked about, you know, getting some shows and I know we've got one and um, at the Cambry house that we're planning on doing in October. Um, but, and I know we want to do, you know, maybe some other places like Philadelphia and some other place And like the Northeast sounds like such a good place to do some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it is getting dark over there. This is funny. You're like, so I know, I, I think there's dark. a light somewhere, but I'm afraid I wouldn't to worry about it. Up. I think it's, I, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I like the effect. I like the effect. I, I know it makes me look younger. Thing. And then Karen think just you look younger and younger. <laughs> well, harsh light's not good for any of us, is it? <laughs> um, I'm young curious. People, young people never say that. They don't, do they? I no. guess, you know, well, you know, to to run from the fate of aging is is been something that I've been actively trying to avoid uh, my entire life. But, um, you know, the older you get, you do start to understand why people are like, you know, ugh, a little more just because it's like, oh, I don't, you just know you don't have as much time left as you used to, you know, barring any kind of unforeseen events, obviously, but um, uh, yeah, but I, I'm also excited at some point to be talking through devices to people on the other side. Oh, I, yeah, y yeah, I, uh, well, I think there was, was the original question, what's happening out here? <laughs> <laughs> I think the new question is, I, I know what my answer would be, but um, once you're in spirit form, what kind of, if at all, communicator are you going to be with people who are investigating the paranormal or trying to establish contact do you think you like have better things to do or do you think you'd be in there mixing it up i i think i would be um i think i'd leave humans i think i'd go see what everything else was i don't you know it's so funny because uh, I was, I always listen to all this stuff on angels and I listen to all these mediums and I'm trying to work on my mediumship. And uh, one of them was saying that um, they forget how hard this is. And I think this has been a hard one. I think I've, I've done okay, but I, I have very little interest in mankind. I think the actual, uh, um, test of mankind has failed. I think we're not, we didn't really do that well. Um, but I would want to know everything else. I know that's not how it works, but if I had my choice, I don't think I'd hang around here. I think I'd want to know, you know, 
for lack of a better term, how the matrix worked. And I want to be in on that or something like that. But um, okay. I guess if, if it was to come back, um, you know what it would be? And I don't know if we get to be this, but it's like Jessica and Oscar. I would like to be an Oscar. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I, uh, this is a much more deep and profound answer than I had, uh, <laughs> or what I thought I might do. Because I would three batteries. <laughs> well, what I would do is I would find all the people who are like ultra serious, right? About the investigation. Like we need to like, I mean, I'm talking about like parapsychologists who are who aren't believers, right? Or people who come into those kind of settings looking for like we're looking for data. We're looking for data here to measure. And I would just like start talking through devices and be like you know, pizza, I like pepperoni, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, cheese pizza is better than eating pizza with meat on it. And they'd be like, who are we talking to? I'd be like, who are you talking to? You know, <laughs> and I, I would totally fuck with them. And then the people who are like on the other side of the spectrum who just think it's a huge joke and are doing it just because they think it's so ridiculous. I would come in with some like really heavy shit. Like, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, there's no fucking ghosts over here. Like, hey, if there's any ghosts, why don't you talk through this stupid box? And I would say something <laughs> like, your life is ending sooner than you think. Or, you know, I would, like, scare the shit out of them. And they'd be like, we need to get this place cleansed. And I'd be like, there is no cleansing of the spirit. You know, and then I would, I would totally just, I'd probably be pretty juvenile, it sounds like. Well. See, but here's what happened. I would go in with the best intentions and go into the Oscar training. And then you would contact me and go, hey, do you want to do this? And I'd go, okay. <laughs> hey, there's some, uh, there's some teenage punks over here who, who are picking on a local paranormal investigator kid. Uh, we, right. need to go, we need to go scare the shit out of them. Well, wouldn't uh, that be great to scare bullies? I think we should do this until I'm completely black. Yes. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the darkness, the veil has returned. Uh, I, you know, I'm curious to see where the investigation that we're doing goes. And I do, I do wonder about, you know, now that I believe that there's confirmation about, you know, what we may have been in contact with to some degree, we didn't even talk about like that one moment in the classroom on post town Sunday where it sounded like, you know, there was some kind of conversation going on about current events. Yeah, this? I don't know why that came up for me, but I, um, yeah, I jumped in and I was like, are we going to war with Russia? She's like, no. And it was like, okay. Um, I think, you know, it's very interesting when we go on investigations too, because there's a little bit of, that what is our mission statement i hate to be like a business but what is our mission statement mm -hmm. because i just like looking for evidence and i like looking and and because i think that's why i like post town because i felt it wasn't a lot of human entities i felt like it was a lot of everything and when it actually became somewhat safe in my mind i thought we can find out what's going on there which it probably isn't safe at all i don't know but it seems safe but that's an interesting, an interesting thing because, you know, this is a really weird alien question for you um, because I heard a guy that had a near-death experience years ago and he, uh, he was not religious at all and he actually had a conversation with God and, or you could say the universe, whatever. And this was in the 80s and he said, um, will you he was worried about nuclear war and god said i will never let that happen you will never destroy my earth i will come down and stop it myself and which gives the interesting connection of the ufos are always showing these nuclear plants aren't they shutting them down and turning them off and kind of showing us that we're not in charge um yeah that is allegedly is what has been happening you know, for years. Uh, I, just, uh, it, yeah. I just had a friend of mine call me and she said, all of a sudden, she said, I don't know what this is, 
but the planet is filled with non-human entities. Things are coming down like this and I don't know what they are. And I thought that whole thing that I just told you, first of all, this is how I would get the facelift if I was going to get it right <laughs> here. Right? I cannot look in Zoom and not make fun of myself. Right? I thought it was here, Brian. It's here. It's up here. But that thought that that guy said that, that God said he would never let it happen. I like take complete comfort in that. And now I'm sitting and then I heard the UFO thing and I was like, all right, somebody told me that planet Earth is like the reality planet that they the other the ufo everybody's watching us like we're the reality show and i'm wondering i would be very i will be surprised if a nuclear bomb goes off yeah i mean after the after we did it after we did it after we did it i think um there's you know just the you know the human part of us has just got to be like how can we do that again? Like we can't know, can we, we can't do that again. And some of the most fascinating stories about like the heroes of this world that should live on in legend for hundreds of thousands of years. Specific, and I can't remember this guy's name, which, you know, goes to show, but there is a, there was um, a Russian submarine captain I believe he was, or he was the weapons engineer on the sub during the Cuban Missile Crisis and was given the order to fire and chose not to. And that would have started World War III. Right. It would have destroyed. It would have destroyed millions. Of, so many people would have died. This guy said, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah. For some reason, chose not to. And I think I'm getting most of the details of this story. Right. But it is a Russian. It was a Russian submarine. Someone, a Russian soldier on a submarine who disobeyed a direct order and would not start the wars to end all wars or to end all life potentially, right? And these are some of like the stories that aren't well known for some reason um, that you can, that I hear that I'm like, holy shit, I never even knew that happened. This guy saved my life and I didn't even know it. Well, that guy was obviously the comedian of the group that just went, fuck this guy. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not following his orders. Up Where's to a going? point, up to a point, I will listen to you. And then <laughs> until that, that point has been reached because I am not going to start uh, this, the war to end all life. I, yes. And so it is, it's stories like that. And it's people like that, that I take solace in understanding not only are they out there now, but they have been there in the past to help us. And if I'm not mistaken, he says, I sensed because like, uh, apparently the, there was a, um, it was a malfunction of some kind, I believe on the, uh, on the submarine itself or from somewhere else indicating that the United States had launched a full out nuclear attack on Mm. Russia. So this was like, can you believe they fucking did that? We have to retaliate. So retaliate, right? They've done it. We've, they've done the unthinkable. And for some reason, this guy, if I'm not mistaken, was like, I sensed that it wasn't real. I sensed that it was a mistake, even though the instruments or whatever were telling us that it was real, that it was happening. I sensed that I couldn't do it because something was wrong. And knowing that all potential nuclear war had just broken out, he somehow sensed that it was an illusion. I wonder if he was like, gee, I wonder if this is the first time my government has lied to me. (laughs) 
<laughs> See, this is why I couldn't, you know, if that was, that was me and they were like, drop the bomb. I'd, I'd like play dumb. Like, what did you say? Who's my mom? Who's my <laughs> <Yeah>. mom? <laughs> Just all day. I can't hear you. Yeah. What? Do I want to go to the prom? What are you talking about? The prom? Oh God, that was so long ago. Um, it wasn't as long ago as you might think, but it was, God, what did I, what was the song they played? What was the song? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think I do take some comfort in that fact, hearing these stories about UFOs shutting down nuclear things. And I mean, I think there's even some former government officials who say they have in fact destroyed missiles that have been shot into space. They, uh, uh, they've gone as far as actually destroying things as opposed to just shutting them down. Now, whether or not any of that information is true or accurate, I, I obviously I can't attest to that. But I do think the combination of humanity um, and individuals being in positions that have to make these decisions um, and understanding that I think at the end of the day, most individuals understand that this is beyond what I should be capable of doing and I'm not going to do it. It could be worth a uh, dishonorable discharge to not do that. Yeah, a dishonorable just dis in specifically for this guy during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Well, who's going to dishonorably discharge me if everybody's been nuked? Yeah. Okay, you're going to send me to a brig that no longer exists. Um, so, yeah. Well, this is an interesting way to wrap this up, wasn't it? Well, it is interesting because I keep noticing as I keep getting darker, you keep yeah. getting lighter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, balance in all things, Karen. Yes. Um, well, you know, Paranormal Karen's the podcast at Rontowski, no underscore. If you ever see an underscore in front of the name Rontowski, run away, run, run away. away. And if you want to learn, my Patreon is Patreon backslash Rontowski, and, and I teach tarot there, and uh, I'm really excited about my Patreon. Yeah, so uh, check that out. Everybody needs to check that out. So um, we've got to do, I want to get you and Matthew on, or we got to do the three of us at some point on either your podcast or, or somewhere as well, maybe in the future too. And then we'll see about April, maybe potentially. Uh, seeing you know i know indiana is not super close to where you are now but we'll see um that was a very good team yeah it was fun yeah i it think was, we had it, a lot but, of fun yeah yeah i th no, i think that was really great chemistry yeah i agree i agree and i think the most exciting thing about doing this investigation is i'm really excited about moving now to new locations potentially and also like trying to showcase and find other investigators as well mm -hmm. um to to show that there are a lot of people out there doing really really amazing investigation work yeah and uh you know and i do believe that a lot of people are doing investigations that are deeply connected to other people's investigations that they're not even aware of yet myself included so um i think uh the idea is to try to find out if those where those connections are too and um and then see what happens but uh yeah but in the meantime uh you know your website's got everything for people right yeah and i um for you and me i just have to get past march i booked all this stuff on the west coast and then moved to the east coast <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like my life will actually begin in April, but yeah. that would be great to be doing this stuff all the time. Yeah, agreed. And, uh, you know, keep your eyes and ears peeled for, you know, uh, dates for when Karen and I are going to be coming to your city. And if you want us to come to your city and you're listening to that, uh, or if you're listening to this, I mean, you know, let us know, hit us up and uh, we'll see if we can set something up. Yeah, love to. Love to. Okay. Well, Karen, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Ryan. Yeah. Always great it, seeing you. Always great. And uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we're going to chat soon. Yeah, absolutely.